This is a brief tutorial of the game Obsession as played on Board Game Arena. Obsession is a game where you are going through various rounds, hosting activities to get various benefits, building up a bit of an engine and a bit of a deck to score the most points at the end of the game. Um, each player represents a family that is inviting guests to various events to try to earn the most reputation and the most favor, uh, eventually attracting even some of the more proper nobles in the area and expanding out their estate and growing their overall uh, reputation as a family. So the game plays over four seasons and each season has three rounds. And in a round, you will typically um, do two things. You will host an activity, and that activity will be one of the um, activities that are based around the improvements that you have in your estate. And you can also buy something from the market to expand out that activity. Each round is one round of uh, turns per player. So you, for each round, you will do one activity and have the option of buying uh, one item. There are a few special rounds. And then after every three rounds, at the end of the seasons, you have this courtship where you are competing for points around whatever the theme is. In this case, the theme is the green, the sporting area, and whoever has the most points under the sporting area will receive uh, a VP point card and have the opportunity to add one of these into their deck for the next season. All right, so uh, on we this is the board that tracks the 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 rounds of the game. We'll talk about some of these special rounds as well, but. Um, those are the rounds of the game with the courtships and the seasons. Here's the market of different expansions you can do to your estate. Uh, you have a hand of guests, but you can also add what are called casual guests and prestige guests. Uh, you can hire more servants. Everybody starts out with uh, one of each type of servant. I started with two just because of this family that was their bonus. Uh, and then you start out with five objective cards. That you, and you'll get some more, but you'll slowly whittle those down over time to where you end up with three at the end uh, that you can try and fulfill for extra points at the end. Points are gotten from those victory point, uh, or from those cards, from any players that you have. You can see in the top right, there's of these cards, there's a point value. Um, that is how many points you can get for that, uh, for that card. Sometimes you'll have negative points, but they give you other benefits. Or they don't, and you just try to get need to try to get rid of them. And then each of these uh, improvements have a point total at the bottom right. And you know some of, notice some of them start negative, and you have to use them to host an activity in order to flip them over to the positive point side. So they're all double sided, and they have some sort of um, options and requirements for the one side, and then on the other side uh, some different types of requirements or options and that flips over after you use it to as as your hosted activity so let's talk about activities so whenever you it is your turn and you want to host an activity um first of all so this is here the order of play uh and so first of all any um of your servants that are in one of these two squares will shift over uh there's kind of a a cycle so you can't use servants twice in a row you have to wait for them to go through that cycle then some you could have some sort of trigger that gives you um, a, a reputation or some something some benefit in that step and then you host an activity now before we talk about hosting the activities we also need to talk about this chart right here which is your reputation so your main reputation is this middle number here and then these little pips 
or how you increase and get to a higher reputation. So as you gain reputation, which is represented by these lions here, whenever you see those lions, that's gaining reputation. And whenever you cross that five back to one, then this turns into a higher number. You can decrease back down if needed, uh, especially if you want to spend some of that uh, reputation in order to get uh, some, some benefits. But the uh, reputation is what allows you to host activities of certain levels. So like these are all level one and I'm reputation level one, which is fine. But if I wanted to host one of these at say two or three, I would need to have a higher rep, rep, uh, reputation. Same with guests. Like currently all my guests either don't require have a reputation or they have a one on them. But there are like, especially the prestige guests have a higher reputation requirement and you can't use them in your activity unless you meet that primary requirement of a reputation here. So that's something to always keep track of. It is also points at the end of the game. Uh, the higher reputation, the more points that you get. And that will go up to six. And then once you pass 6.5, then it goes to max. And then it can go to max 0.5. It'll say 7.5 over here just because they're tracking it uh, here on BGA. But it is quote unquote the max. And that's as far as you can go. So you will first pick an activity and that act, and based on one of these uh, items and that activity will have some sort of requirement for servants and a requirement for guests. Your guests are your, your possible guests are your hand of cards. You start out with four uh, from your starting family and then you get two random ones from the casual uh, deck. So for example, this one here requires the footman, the white white one here, and two gentry. Gentry is just the general like any people. Some of them though require ladies. This one requires specifically two family members. So there will be um, some you know different requirements. But if it just says gentry, that just means any two people. But when you choose the guests as well, not only do you have to worry about their reputation, but they could have requirements as well in their for servants. So this one needs a lady, which is the purple one. This one does as well. The one thing you can do is this red housekeeper may use, may be used as a lady uh, if needed. It can kind of, it's kind of the head of the ladies and, and so that works. And there's a couple other replacements that you can make with special abilities that come, but that's the main uh, replacement that you can do. Um, and so when you choose that activity, then you choose a guest to go to that activity. You can only choose the number that it says, and you have to have the required servants and types to, to play that and reputation. Then you start to get the benefits for it. So um, I'm going to show my first activity here. So I chose this Bowling Green activity, and I put my footman on it, and as a as a benefit, it gave me 300 pounds. And then I used, no, it already, let's see if, did it already discard them? Not yet. Um, it gave me 300 cards and then I used, let's see, these two guests here. You can see they're in green and eventually they'll be discarded. As soon as you use a guest, um, you can't use them again for an activity until you do a pass turn, which we'll talk about in a bit. So I've got the two guests, I have my servant, and then I get benefits or favors. And so there I get 300 pounds for this one, 200 pounds for this one. And then for this one, I get two reputations. That's those two lions. And, um, Oh, that so the two lines there in that case is only if you uh, accompany it with a male prestige guest. Oh, I forgot about that. But so yeah, some some usually the text on these is simply flavor text, but sometimes there is something important to read in that. So pay attention to that. But then you have the fleur de lis at the top. So this one uh, is one fleur de lis, whereas like this one here is two fleur de lis. And notice that you have to, you lose 200 if you play this guest. So you have to actually pay that. And then if you have it at the end of the game, you lose a point. Uh, so you want to get rid of this eventually, but it can get you prestige guests. 
So you'll notice this one has one for delete. That means when I use it, I get to draw one from the deck. And actually, you have to take one uh, if you use it. And but this one lets me choose because it's a double fleur delete lets me choose the top one from the prestige deck and those are much better much higher level guests that will uh, give better benefits as well and points at the end of the game so I get the money and I get you can see I've got 500 pounds now and I didn't get the reputation because I didn't I didn't combine it with a prestige guest but I did get the new card that's what this one is here and um, then I now may purchase an improvement. I have 500 pounds and you can purchase it based on this price at the market with uh, some sort of very um, altering alteration based on the type of card. So this one is this one is 300 pounds and it says minus 200. So this one actually only costs 100, whereas this one is 400 plus 100. I think I end up buying this one and the blue ones typically are just abilities, ongoing abilities. So like this one gets me what's called an under butler, which can take place of either the butler or the footman or the, or the valet, the green valet. Um, and so that gives me just an extra person that I can start using uh, to host those activities. And then it goes down there. This had flipped over, and now it's worth two points. It only gets me 200 if I if I use it again, but at least it's it uh, gives me the two points there, and that contributes towards that sporting theme by the end of the season there. And uh, my two the two servants that I well the one servant I used went here, and then the under butler is what I got from there. It goes into this one. So my next turn those will move to the servants' quarters, and then eventually the next turn will be available to use again. So you can never use the same servant twice in a row, unless you pay some reputation to do so. So that is the basic turn, hosting an activity based on all these requirements and the guests that you have, and then purchasing something from the builder's market. Uh, you notice that now these two have been discarded, and I can't use them for my future activities unless I do a pass turn. The pass turn is similar to a normal turn, but you will not host an activity. Instead, you have the option of either getting 200 pounds or clearing out the market, I believe is the other option. Uh, you get all of your, your, your used cards back into your hand. All of your servants go back into your available service card. So if there were any that you had used a bunch in that round, you can pull them all the way back for the next round. And you still get to buy something if you would like. So that will probably be helpful to do at least once or twice during the game. But it does use an entire round, and you don't get to host that activity and get the favors based on that. Uh, a couple other special activities that everybody starts with. And this one here, if you do this activity, then whenever this village fair comes up, um, this flips over and you receive 300 pounds and two reputation, but you do lose the three points. So you notice that. So, it, you know, if you want to do that up front, it's kind of money is fairly tight in the game. So uh, it can be worth it for that for reputation and to 600 pounds. This one here, you don't have any guests that go with it but then you use the butler and then it lets you hire two new servants from here and then they go into your spot there and uh, and then that flips over and gives you a point and then if you do it again at some point you can either hire two more or you can steal one from another player if you'd like other than that you're continuing to add new uh, items to your very uh, new improvements to your estate which allow you to run new activities these mostly uh, activities mostly have a theme so the um, the pink ones typically let you get new guests so for instance this one gives you a prestige guest but the flip side of it lets you take two casuals but only pick one uh, 
this one here lets you dismiss a guest so that would let you get rid of one that has like low points or, or negative points that you might want to get rid of so the estate activities typically are about guests adding guests to your hand the the uh, purple ones are typically about getting reputation and the green ones are typically about getting money the brown ones don't usually have benefits around them but they often let you uh, spend a lot of guests in a single event so you could have one that's like five or six uh, gentry and so you can use a whole bunch of your cards and get a lot of the benefits out of that and, and just stack up those benefits for that activity there are a few other things that come through that aren't aren't the improvements that aren't activities um, similar to these that often are called monuments those are worth a lot of points and they sometimes will give you a bonus like a bonus reputation or money each round uh, and you'll just see those as they come through eventually um, after you get to certain spots some of these will move into this reserve so um, at the uh, I believe here any blue ones will go into this pile here and always be worth um, three hundred dollars is just to help cycle some of these through and then uh, after a while any level one will go through and these will just always be available and you use this button here to just show what are the uh, what are what are the buildings available in that reserve if you want to buy one of them for the cheaper prices couple of the other events here so during the sixth round you draw two more objective cards I forgot to mention that after each of these courtships you do get rid of one of your objective cards which is nice you can kind of see which ones are you going to get which ones are you probably not going to fulfill and slowly get rid of the ones that you definitely won't make by the end and so with getting rid of four and then drawing two you end up with three at the end those objective cards the uh, we talked about the village fair the builders holiday lets you on your turn buy multiple buildings at once so you may want to save up some money for that uh, they don't ref they don't refresh in between purchasing but they refresh in between turns for the people and then the national holiday basically lets you host an activity and bring guests of any reputation level no matter what your reputation is so you don't have to worry about that so you can bring in all your prestige guests for that national holiday so again these cards are flipped over and the final courtship there's going to be four cards that have gone and typically it's only one of the blue cards that you're looking for point totals like right now i'm winning that green and if i hold that lead by the end of the the season then i get to bring one of these fairchilds in if there's a tie um neither of us get these fairchild guests but um we both get a vp card you get a vp card if you win as well and the vp cards basically are points at the end of the game if you don't use them or some benefit that you can do to use them like money or being able to move your servants or so forth i mentioned too that you can use reputation uh, as a resource if needed you can use two reputation for a hundred pounds three reputation to refresh a servant to bring it all the way back and then four reputation to clear out the market um, the first two the hundred dollars and the, the servant refresh you can do as many times as you want during a turn but remember the lower reputation you have the uh, at the end of the game that uh, that's lower points as well but the uh, re the refreshing of the builders market can only happen once per turn all right um that is the basic idea each player is just going to simply host an activity you don't have to host an activity but uh typically you want to try to host as many or do a pass and get some money and then the, the round goes to the next one and after the three rounds you calculate your theme you um do your courtship and go on to the next season and this continues to go and you start to build more and more so in this case i got some reputation i'm trying to get it up to us that one so i can start building these other two and in this case it said i can choose two and pick one to keep uh, and so forth and 
I didn't end up having money, so I couldn't build one of those. And I'll skip to the towards the end of the game so you can kind of see what it looks like by the end. All right, this is the last round of the game. And you can see we've all got some extra improvements, some more specialized than others. Um, you can see I've really filled out my guests here, I've used a lot of guests, and so that can definitely give me points, but I've got some really bad ones too, like negative four on that, some things that I do want to get rid of. Uh, and in fact, this last event lets me dismiss one that I'm doing because I really want to get rid of that negative four one here. Uh, and a lot of the extra servants have been hired, and yeah, people have just gotten different point values. You can see that there's two greens here, so those are going to count uh, twice when we're doing totals up to, um, for that ending point, because at the end of it, you don't get the card. Well, you still get one of the cards, but it doesn't really matter which one. You just get eight points for having that card at the end of the game. Because each season you give back that Fairchild card and uh, the next person who won that season will get uh, to choose one of them. And at the end, it, that means eight points. You can see here these reserves have been has filled up. Those are always available to buy. And then this last, uh, this is this last turn. I'm kind of doing something weird where I, I ended up spending a lot of my reputation in order to to get money enough to buy this sculpture garden which is 10 points in itself which is great but uh i had an act, i have an objective here that if i can have the flower room and the garden which i have the flower room already then i get 11 points at the end so that's worth more than losing a couple reputation levels to have that 10 plus 11 even though it costs 800 plus 400 so 1200 and i was able to eventually get it Still didn't end up winning, but um, it was a big point turn for sure. But that is obsession again. Twelve or fifth, yeah, twelve rounds. Uh, each round, you're hosting an activity, buying improvements, and you're a lot of times adding guests to your hand that give you points at the end. You're working at your VP. Uh, here's a, here's one of those VP cards. This one I get four points, or it would let me just refresh all my servants if I'd spent it. And uh, filling those objective cards, competing for these various themes, and trying to get the most points by the end of the game. All right, I hope this was helpful.